Tom Doody, middle-aged American living in New Jersey near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you would type Howdy Doody into Google. You'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom Doody in a Google search for my site. Fien San is financial, criminal, don't know what the E-N means. SARS is S-A-R, and it's, crim it's a, a suspicious activity report. The headlines read, FinCEN, the, city, the video will uh, focus on SARS. Now, SARS also happens to be a, 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 a potential pandemic of years ago in Asia. That's a coincidence. This is a, of the U.S. banking system, a suspicious activity report. Now, listeners, here why, here's why you might care. You might have a SARS written against you, and you will never know it. I might have SARS written against me, and I will never know it. So here's how easy they are to get. One, I know from the thorough media on Elliot Spitzer, the former governor of New York, when he was using prostitutes out of state, he ended up leaving his governor's post after res resigning and leaving public life in shame. Now, what triggered the, uh, the FBI investigation into Elliot is not clear. But from what I am able to determine, it was not the fouling SARS that I will describe. In other words, a SARS is the opportunity for a bank to say something's happening in this bank. It's suspicious. It reports to the federal government and the federal government may then begin an investigation. That would be the front door of this system. However, there is no good reason to believe that that's what started Elliot Spitzer's investigation into his use of prostitutes. So Elliot Spitzer's SAR goes like this. He calls a banker, someone he knows, and asks him or her whether he can send money to a certain organization without it being traced. Now, Elliot is super wealthy and had a friendly relationship with the banker, uh, would certainly know the person by name and Elliot Spitzer would get his ass kissed by the branch that he would use in a familiar way. There is absolutely zero reason to believe there was any hostility. Uh, the banker got off the phone, filed a SARS, went on with his or her day. The details of that SARS, which I've read, ended up getting disclosed in the full FBI investigation that brought Governor uh, Sp Sp that brought Governor Spitzer down. So in this example, it's very clear that the SARS is not evidence of a crime. The SARS is a suspicious activity report and nothing more. And the thousands of people who are subjects of these SARS never know it. And with the recent news about FinCEN, it is very clear that the number of SARS that are written, tens of thousands of these things, are generally written by low-level bankers, and the subject of those SARS never know they're a subject of the SARS. Now, in the news today, and in the prosecution of Paul Manafort, it was also clear that he was the subject of SARS. Now, in Paul Manafort's case, it was not only a suspicious activity, it d d d uh, detailed criminal activity. Now, Paul Manafort was moving money through these shell corporations, millions of dollars in uh, four or five different uh, remote locations. This money is coming out of Ukraine, and he's filtering the money in many different ways and making very large amounts, anonymous transactions. Anonymous because these are being made by the hands of organizations, and there's no person behind the organization. This is commonly called a shell corporation. Those SARS would be written to also say there's an absence of ev any evidence that there's legitimate business behind this, these transactions. So in that case, Paul Manafort was the subject of SARS. It was d detailing criminal activity. And in addition to that, Paul Manafort was uh, prosecuted and is a convicted felon. Now, in trying to interpret the news, it is very confusing because the organizations that have analyzed these SARS have chosen what I will call celebrity criminals. Now, I've already detailed two of them, Paul Manafort and Elliot Spitzer. These two men have political, social, organizational relevance, and they, if you can bring them down, it is politically relevant. 
Again, celebrity criminals. Also sifted out of these thousands of SARS is ISIS. Uh, Barclays Bank was sending, uh, doing transactions for ISIS, and they were knowingly doing transactions for ISIS. Yes, these are the decapitate people guys, and uh, Barclays is moving their money. There's also a man that traces his friendship to Vladimir Putin all the way back to childhood. That man is involved in criminal activity, and his SARS were brought forward in the news. Now, I've read a lot of international moves, and so the list goes from there to include uh, former presidents of uh, two different African countries. HSBC was involved in a Ponzi scheme that duped 10,000 uh, victims. Money was being moved into a U.S. HSBC account and then sent to Hong Kong, where the kingpin of this Ponzi scheme was benefiting from other people's, the victim's money. Now, the maddening thing is that again and again, HSBC filed these SARS, said this is suspicious, but they put the forward, they put the transactions into forward motion. And then all of a sudden, when the eruption comes, when you got tens of thousands of people who basically had money stolen from them, the victims thought they were building a church in California. When he realized that this money is in Hong Kong, suddenly there's a broad outcry and it's revealed that during the time, HSBC is filing these suspicious activities report, but doing nothing to halt the money. All the money is gone. The victims are truly money. There is very close to zero uh, chance of recovering any of that money for the victims. Now, my reading and video watching goes to India. There are some pretty high profile people in India that have also been caught up at the list that I think is relevant for any of my listeners is, is reached the end. So listeners, if you imagine this story and you try to say, oh my God, you got Putin, you have ISIS, you have Barclays, you have uh, HSBC, you've got uh, Chase Bank. It is just so hard to comprehend what is FINRES and why is it in the headlines? In other words, when a story usually reaches the headlines, you kind of say, oh, okay, well, this was leaked and now this person is under suspicion and uh, you know, something's going to happen like it happened to Elliot Spitzer and so on. But the way this story presents itself, it's really confusing because the only thing related among these far-reaching stories that involve terrorists like uh, ISIS and Vladimir Putin's buddy, the only thing that's in common and makes them part of one story is the information was leaked and reported by news media all on the same day. Now, the maddening thing from my perspective is really the reason I've done this uh, video is that the, the vast majority of these people who are involved in criminal activity, moving millions of dollars in single transactions and billions of dollars over time, these people go unprosecuted. So to find that literally the United States federal government is sitting on these records and doing nothing, to finding that the money has gone forward rather than being held by the bank. And then in some cases, when it's halted, the money's already gone and it's too late. And then meanwhile, I look back, who's been prosecuted? Elliot Spitzer, who wasn't prosecuted. He was a fa he, he, he resigned, which is kind of like a prosecution. He admitted guilt and resigned, and he was not prosecuted. Paul Manafort was prosecuted. They were pro prosecuted because they're celebrity criminals. So just like in uh, pop culture, we're obsessed with celebrity and criminal. We're, it seems our authorities are obsessed with celebrity uh, criminals also. So now I tie back all the way to the beginning, the idea that listeners, you could be the subject of a SAR. I know that I could be the subject of a SAR. However, they're highly unlikely to have any other dish additional attention and nobody's going to find out that they've been the subject of a SAR unless you end up being a celebrity criminal or your crimes end up with a mass amount of victims who are able to rattle the chains of a bank and furthermore the federal government to bring someone to justice or at least uh, expose the uh, the criminal activity that are detailed in the SARS. This has been Tom Duty, middle-aged American living in New Jersey near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you would type Howdy Duty into Google. You'll find the correct spelling of the famous puppet. You then combine Tom Duty in a Google search for my site. Thank you for listening. Have a good day, good evening, a restful night's sleep. Ciao. Tom Duty, middle-aged American, living in New Jersey near the Lincoln Tunnel. If you were to visit my website, you would.